Three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash. And this is today's comic. <laughs> the, <laughs> the emphasis on Ash. I didn't mean to do that, but it came out. Um, look at this. It's Bendis Darrington Stewart. Um, it's weird. Uh, this is that DC 100-page Giants or Walmart exclusives. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, DC did these... They're still doing them. These 100-page giant books are $5. Really good deal, right? I mean, you consider Spider-Man number 25 was 64 pages, and it's $8. (laughs) Um, What a ripoff. Anyways, back to DC books. Um, So they did these books, and there was a lot of controversy surrounding them because while they're mostly reprint material, and from what I understand, it's actually uh, good reprint material. They were curated really well. So... They're meant for like normies, people just walk in the store, pick it up and, and read and have good stories and not necessarily need to have a college degree on DC, which is kind of one of the things that DC fails on and needs to really improve and something that Marvel does or at least used to do was make their stuff very accessible. If you are a Spider-Man fan, or I'm sorry, if you weren't a Spider-Man fan or maybe you just like Spider-Man movies, where you could just pick up a Spider-Man book and be like, oh, and jump right in and get fun story. You didn't. He didn't feel like, oh my God, I don't understand what's happening in this universe. I've been reading comics for a long time. I always used to be a massive Marvel head. Uh, I took a hiatus out of comics, but I still paid attention to what was going on, followed, you know, from the outside. Uh, got back into comics a little over a year ago, been reading DC pretty much ever since, and I'm still not knowing things and making mistakes, and people like Sergeant Bats will come on and be like, you idiot, this character's that, da da da, you know, and I was like, well, she's a core, I don't. This character hasn't been used in like 20 years. Now they're doing some story about it and how it relates to this and that. And I'm like, who the hell's supposed to know? It's so convoluted. You can't keep up with anything. I thought Rebirth would fix it. And the problem that I see that DC does, they keep doing these crisis events to like fix their universe. But then they let it get out of control again. And it's like, dude, if you have the pot on full high heat and it boils over, you know, you, you can pull the pot off the burner for a little bit and, you know, blow on it. And the bo- but you put it back on, it's going to boil over again. Like, these crisis events are just like pulling the pot off the burn, you know, off the heat. And then they just put it right back down again. And that's that doesn't fix things. Rebirth should have slimmed everything down. But they couldn't commit to the bit. And that's a problem. <laughs> it's, uh, you got to commit. Commit. I know it's hard. Fans nag you and beg you. We want this. We want that. But if you give fans what they want every fan what they want then you end up getting all the characters no fan every character has a fan no one wants to see their characters die so every time you create a new character you're creating a character that can't die because someone will be upset right and you just you got to keep it tight and dc anyways so this is bendis darrington stewart it's number one in these books not only the reprints but there were also um, original stories to entice, I guess, people that comic collectors would have something new to buy for their five bucks. You get a 16 page story. Uh, I never bought these books because I knew they were going to do these reprints eventually. So if the stories are good, you could just buy the reprints and they collect two of the stories per book. So instead of $5 to get, so $10 essentially to get this Batman story in those books, you could pay whatever these are, three ninety nine, I think they are. Um, a piece, and you—I mean—you're essentially getting two stories, so two dollars per story. Um, this has been—I did a Superman one already by Tom King. Um, they kind of flip flop, you know. Ben is doing Batman, Superman, um, and I did the Superman. Go check that one out. This is Bendis Batman. Now, a lot of people say Bendis is better suited for Batman. I would probably agree. I think he's better on the street level stuff. But that doesn't necessarily make him good on Batman. Um, I did find this interesting as a book. One thing I like. So we get the typical Alfred talking, you know, and of the 17 dinner guests you have waiting for you here at the stately Wayne Manor, there is one lovely woman named Lorelai who is both age and intellectually appropriate for you. There's nothing I can do about that now, Alfred. And you get this cool POV shot, right? You see Batman's face reflected off the glass of the Batmobile as he's driving it. Serve the appetizer. I will also recommend your guests choose slowly. What was the Riddler's most recent riddle? Please don't make me read it again. I can't read the encryption from here, word for word. 
posted on the dark web. When is the Riddler not the Riddler? So disappointing. It does seem a little pedestrian for him. Is everything capitalized and spelled correctly? Yes, sir. So they go on and on, and it's, it's really cool. The whole time, it's like point of view shot, right? And you see Batman's hand shooting. I like that shot up to the roof. Um, and then Batman's zipping up, and he comes up, <laughs> and he kind of startles the scroll. again, you see his reflection in the window. That's kind of cool, even though it's point of view. Um, one would hate for the exactness of science to do anything like ridiculous, like save your life. He's like, that's the thing. He's like, I'm going to do this manually, relying too much on tech lately. And he's, geez, ma'am, no worries, big fan. Is anyone hurt? Are, are you talking to me? <laughs> it's like, she's just kind of in shock. Um, that was kind of funny. Uh, I have, I'll give credit where it's due. Um, the alarms in the hotel are already tripped, but I have no injury reports as of yet. It might, or it might be a trap. Then it's a loud, clumsy, awful trap. Be ready for anything. That's my line, Master Bruce. Or, God, I can't read when I'm doing these videos. That's my line, Master Bruce. I can hear the screams. And again, all this cool POV shots. I'm like, oh, this, I really enjoy it. I haven't seen this before. Um, so I'm, 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 it's, it's, it's visually stimulating. It's interesting. I'm picking up reports, or I keep flipping lines. I'm picking up reports of multiple, I have a visual. And there's all these Riddlers. And then whew, Batman swooping down. DC Comics proudly presents Batman Universe. Again, and I don't know why it's called that, but Bendis is never good at picking up names. Part one, Brian Michael Bendis, artist Nick Darrington, Dave Stewart, colors. I have to say, this artist really grew on me. At first, I was like, it's kind of a little hokey, weird, but I liked it. Um, I take back what I said about the Riddler. Seems he did put forth some effort. Decoys. What am I looking at? Facial recognition, da da da, they're blah blah blah, too long, don't read, they're stuntmen. Stunt teams? Yes. And he's like, have at him. So Batman's like, yes, I can go to town. And he doesn't hold back, so Batman has fun beating up all these guys. And it's just, whew, like right out of the old 66 Batman, right? Because of all the henchmen. When's the last time you saw a comic where Batman was fighting, like, henchmen like this? It's, um, I wish it was by a comic artist or writer who understood like action because you don't get as much. You get a lot of, you know, you get a kick here and a punch there, but it's just more to like tell the reader, hey, there's action going on rather than getting cool action shots from a cool comic artist that you can just be like, oh, you know, it's just. It's like, oh, there's the real Riddler. It's like, pow, shooting a gun. Batman's like, oh, there he is. And again, just a random action pose shot to just illustrate that there's fighting going on, not to actually follow the fight, if you understand the difference. Um, if you watch a martial arts movie, the purpose of the martial arts movie is to watch the fight. You follow the fight. The fight itself is a story. Um, then there are modern action films a lot of times where there's action going on, and you'll see like a lot of shitty directors will do like the whole shaky cam thing, like da 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 to like make you your mind think that there's action going on, but they don't actually know how to tell action like a story. Um, and so there's very few good action directors in Hollywood, to be honest with you. Um, so this is kind of reminding me of that. It's like, but bow, here's a shot, and then boom, another shot, and it's just random. Things it doesn't have to do anything. You don't. You're not following the fight. And Riddler's running away. Edward, he's running. Batman's chasing him, and turns around with the gun. Whoa, Batman, and then dive tackles him. Rescues the egg that Edward stole, and um, yeah, I got your note. Your stuntmen were cute, but Harley. When is the Riddler not a Riddler? And he's saying it over. When is the Riddler not the Riddler? Stop that. Sir, I'm picking up a trio of unique readings. Yeah? And then, me too. And then, zap! Batman's knocked out unconscious. You're like, oh. Go ahead. Be my guest. Maybe he can't breathe. Sure, kid. Take off his mask. He won't mind. 
Please don't. Where's the egg? You ordered eggs? Where's the Riddler? All the Riddlers were being loaded in the paddy wagon. No, the real one. And so here we get Bendis doing the nine. So Tom King avoids doing his trademark nine page thing. And then Bendis, of course, copies it. And they, but it works okay here for the interrogation of these different Riddler guys. Um, then we get the iconic Batman shot with uh, Alfred on the roof for the bat signal. Thanks for the quick assist, Commissioner. Every Riddler story is the same. This was an elaborate setup and every loose end has been cut. And no sign of the real Riddler. We have an APB and a, we are working with MCU and Interpol. He was scared, Jim. This wasn't his gig. He was being used. By the way, Interpol doesn't work in the U.S. <laughs> this is a comics trope that Marvel used to be really guilty of. I think maybe Bendis brought... I don't know if DC... Any DC fans tell me Bats, Breen, people that know DC. Did, does DC use Interpol? Because <laughs> like Marvel used it all the time as like some you know, international police, which is what they stand for. But Inter Interpol doesn't operate in U.S. soil. <laughs> like, um, so it's like weird in that aspect. Um, so they're going off and it turns out that there's a note from Jonah Hex and it's like, oh, Jonah Hex. So he goes, I thought this was kind of cool. He's a small little one road desert town. <sighs> Batmobile shows up. Now, why Batman would drive all the way to, like, Podunk halfway, you know, you figure this is probably where, somewhere like in New Mexico or Arizona. He's in Gotham, which is on the East Coast. Well, maybe he had the Batmobile air dropped. I don't know. <laughs> now, what the hell am I looking at exactly? You made a wrong turn somewhere? I'm looking for someone. The Joker ain't been through here. Someone who lives here. Well, if they live here, they have to go by me. I love small towns. I'm looking for a girl who calls herself Jenny. Jenny Hex. Jenny, man here to see ya. And he's talking about this Fabergé egg, which Jenny owned because she inherited it. Blah, 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 blah. It's worth $15 million. Blah, 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 blah. Bunch of banter with Jenny Hex. Oh, look, I'm Brian Michael Bendis. I get an excuse to use Jenny Hex because she's in my young... By the way, I read Young Justice. And she gives Batman a lot of lip because, of course, his characters don't fear the Batman <laughs> like everyone else does. Um, and Batman doesn't get what he wants. And he's just like, okay, and like leaves. <laughs> oh, I missed it. I pocket texted you a second I saw him. M made a want? What, what, a what do you want? And she's like, oh, looking around. Goes in the back room. Looks... Goes, kicks over a thing, opens the chest. Oh, does that chest look familiar? Click, click, clank. Mm-hmm. Look. Batman. And then we cut to Amsterdam. And we see the joke, or the Riddler, was with some guys. We're like, oh, don't worry. We got you. You're safe here. Blah, blah, blah. You're a million miles away from Gotham City. No, actually, I'm not. And Batman shows up. <laughs> oh, man, is that really him? Oh, God. We got you covered, we promise. We hired a guy. I got real up close this time. Deathstroke. That'll haunt you. So Deathstroke is shown up, and he's going to fight the Batman. And they get in a fight. Batman does a little sidekick to Deathstroke. And some more fighting. This one is a little bit better in the action. There's actually a narrative for this fight. Um, so I appreciated that. And... Deathstroke gets his licks in, which he should, because Deathstroke's a badass. Battering to the face of the Riddler. Bats would appreciate that. Um, more fights with Deathstroke. And it's overall, it's pretty good. This artist is not the best kind of artist to tell a good comics action story. He's better for a drama detective story. Bendis isn't really good at writing a detective story, which is kind of weird because he's known for Jessica Jones and all these other books that are all detective stuff. This is like a faux detective story. What he does is he writes a story about Batman solving a crime, but a good detective story writes out the solution. Like, so you, the reader, get to sort of sit in the back seat and watch the detective put all the pieces together. The way Bendis writes it is more of like, there's a mystery. Batman solved it. 
where you don't get to see how it's solved. You don't get to try to put the clues together yourself. It just happens coincidentally because the script necessitates it. That's not how you write mysteries. You can tell a story that way, but people who want to read a mystery story, a whodunit, um, that, that, that's not what, how that interests them, right? You, you, I hope I'm explaining that correctly. So they're fighting. I think uh, Deathstroke got taken out a little too easy. He's getting away. Batman's like, Edward! He's crawling around bleeding. When is your gift? And then, bam! I did like this. I liked how you saw this coming. Batman turns and then he gets locked in. Then you see this coming at, locks in the throat. Arr, arr, arr. And, and uh, Riddler's like, oh, Green Arrow. Hey, Bats, you're welcome. <laughs> Is this a trope of Brian Michael Bendis that the characters in his, his books always need to be saved by someone else? <laughs> I swear to you, right? Superman is constantly having Supergirl show up and save the day, or, or Zod. Like, Superman never actually does anything. And now in this book, Batman's like on the case, gets to the end, and it's like, oh, I'm about to get, I'm oh, Deathstroke, I can't, oh, wow, don't worry, someone else will come and save you. <laughs> and that's it. Like, that's how it ends. Now, what is this all about? And please do not answer in the form of a question. Seriously, don't. He's talking to the Riddler. That's kind of funny. But it's like, really? I like Green Arrow. I like when Green Arrow helps Batman. One of my most favorite iconic scenes in all of comics history is in The Dark Knight Returns when when Batman is fighting Superman and Green Arrow shows up and he's got one arm, but he can still shoot the bow with his teeth. He's got the kryptonite arrow. Ash, you know, spoiler alert, Batman beats up Superman, but he has help. Like Everyone always talks about, oh, Batman beats Superman. Yes, he planned for it. He ambushed Superman. He had kryptonite. There was like numerous things of how he beat Superman. Um, but that's a whole side issue. I love that scene. That that scene in Dark Knight Returns is fantastic when Green Arrow shows up. Um, but it's like, just oh, look, I'm fighting the Riddler. I need Green Arrow to help. A little, a little weird. However, let's get back to the book. Um, this was an okay book. It was not the Superman books. It's not trash. Um, you hear that, Forky? It's not trash. However, it's not Stan the Man quality either. This is an okay book. If you like Bendis, maybe pick this up. The art was pretty good. The story is okay. I give it three stars. Nothing to really cry about, but nothing to write home about. Just a decent, fun little book. Some Bendisisms that I was like, eh. But also some interesting things with the POV shots. Um, some of the action scenes. Uh, I liked how he hand, Bendis reined in the humor. Uh, and I don't, I don't mean like he reined it in like didn't make it too funny. I think Bendis thinks he's funnier than he is and he's constantly making all the characters quippy all the time when it doesn't belong. He had the one funny little scene on the roof with the girl, and she's like, oh, starstruck, you know, shocked, big fan. That was kind of funny and then moved on. That showed really good restraint, and that is a sign of good writing. Um, this story is a little bit lacking. It's uninspired. Okay, Batman solving a case of a Fabergé egg. It feels very much like a backup story. But why is Bendis' backup stories feel better than his primetime time? Big plan stories like with Superman. Maybe Bendis should be doing backup stories like this. Just simple, not big arc, you know, covering the whole DC universe, changing everything. Just a basic little throwaway story. Maybe that's where Bendis shines. Maybe maybe giving Bendis too many tools is the problem, right? He's like dangerous. Like, here's all these power tools. Like, Bendis is like drilling holes in the roof and, <laughs> and tearing down the building. Like, Whoa, 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 stop here, here, here's a hammer. <laughs> like, okay, like, that's it. Hammer and a screwdriver, that's all you get. No, um, so yeah, I don't want to recommend this book, but it definitely is gets an okay. So if you like Batman, if you, you like some of Bendis' stuff, then this might be for you. If you don't like Batman and you, if you hate Bendis, you probably hate his bad stuff. Like, 
Either way, I think I reviewed the book well enough. I was going to go on and on forever like I always do, and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to stop in under 20 minutes. I'm signing out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.